Hey y'all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie. This is where I talk about knitting, my tips, my tricks, my opinions, and my preferences. So recently I did a video sharing my top tips on doing a gauge swatch. And when I was preparing for that video, I did ask on the community tab if anyone had questions about swatching. And I got a really interesting question, which was, is there a way to estimate how much yarn you'll need for the swatch. And I was like, you know what? There is a way, but I didn't have time to cover it in that video. And I thought, hey, this is actually useful information, not just for swatching, but also if you are doing something like intarsia, and why not just dedicate a whole video to it? So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and find out how you can estimate the amount of yarn you'll need for a gauge swatch or when you're making yarn and butterflies for intarsia, or any time you have a small bit of knitting to do. As we get into the video today, I got a couple things. One, I am shooting this at a time when my house is under some renovation from a flood that occurred back last year in 2021. I have a live stream about it if you're interested in what happened, but uh, I can't avoid shooting at times while work is going on. So you might hear some buzzing sounds or people wandering around. And that is just the gentlemen who are doing an amazing, amazing job uh, fixing my house. <laughs> But the other thing, of course, is as always, want to remind you that down in the description box, you will find timestamps to various parts of the video if you want to skip ahead to any information. I always hope you'll watch through the video at least one time because you never know what little trick or funny moment might happen. So I think it's always worth watching at least once, in my not so humble opinion. Also down in the description box, you will find a list of materials and resources that I think are relevant to today's video. Some of these will have clearly marked affiliate links. If you click on an affiliate link, it will take you to a place where you can do some shopping. If you make a purchase, I might then earn a small commission. And this really does help support my channel. It helps me buy supplies for review, supplies for demonstration, upgrade equipment, that sort of thing. And really my goal is to spread the joy and love of crafting and be a resource to the knitting community. So if you utilize one of my affiliate links or leave me a tip through Kofi or a super thanks, Thank you so much, it is so greatly appreciated. And uh, if those aren't options for you, I completely understand, no pressure. Um, I'm really just glad that you are here watching a video today. A gauge gives you how many stitches per inch that you're going to want to knit to in order to get the size for the pattern that you're working. But you can also figure out how many inches per stitch you'll have. Because really what a gauge swatch is doing is you're figuring out how big your stitches are. <laughs> That's really what you're doing. So you can figure out how many inches per stitch that you're knitting, and from there you can calculate how much yarn you're going to need. So the first thing that we need to do to eventually figure out how much yarn we're gonna want for a gauge swatch is to actually figure out how many stitches we plan to work in our gauge swatch. And this is where just a little bit of math comes into play. We're gonna utilize a real life situation. Um, I found this free pattern on Knit Picks. Full disclosure, I am a Knit Picks affiliate. But this free pattern, uh, it's called the Shoreline Chalette, and it is a garter stitch pattern with an eyelet kind of detail, and it's sort of an ideal pattern for this demonstration today because the gauge is given in garter stitch. So if you watch my video on my top tips for working a gauge swatch, I've recommended actually knitting a gauge swatch that was at least or the goal was the gauge swatch at the end would be at least six inches by six inches. Gauge is normally given in four inches and there's very good reasons for that, but I think it's better to actually knit a slightly larger gauge than that so that you have plenty of room to make an accurate measurement of how many stitches per inch that you have. Um, so what we need to do then is to calculate how many stitches will end up working in that six by six swatch. All you need to do is to multiply the number of stitches that you've casted on by the number of rows that you plan to knit 
and that will give you the number of stitches that you will knit overall. And if you're like, Carrie, I don't know if I'll remember all that math. No worries. I will put the formulas that I discussed in today's video down in the description box so you always have them for easy reference. So for the pattern that we're looking at today, the Shoreline Chalette, the gaze is given as 15 stitches and 28 rows uh, equals 4 inches. If I were making a 4 inch swatch, I would then just multiply 15 by 28 to figure out the total number of stitches for that swatch. But I would plan to knit a six inch by six inch swatch. So I need to first figure out, uh, do a little bit of calculations to figure out how many stitches I would cast on for and then how many rows I would knit for. So what I need to do is just take the gauge and break it down from how many stitches and rows I'd knit per four inches to one inch. So 15 divided by four equals 3.75 stitches. All right. And I'm going to multiply that by six. So 22 and a half stitches, I'm gonna go ahead and round up and I would cast on for 23 stitches, okay? So for my rows, how many rows I'd work to get six inches of length, uh, I'm gonna take 28, divide that by four equals seven, multiply that by six, that's 42 rows. So I would cast on 23 stitches and knit 42 rows. So I multiply 23 times 42 and I get 966 stitches. So overall for this pattern, I would knit 966 stitches for this six inch gauge swatch. All right, so now that we know how many stitches that we're eventually gonna have to knit for a gauge swatch utilizing the Shoreline Chalette, we now need to figure out how many inches of yarn each stitch will take up. The way we're gonna figure this out is we're gonna make actually a little mini swatch. We're gonna just knit up about 100 stitches and then we can figure out from there how much yarn we'll need for 966 stitches. So I have some yarn here and we're gonna make a little mini swatch. And, uh, but I'm just gonna cast on 20 stitches. And you can use any cast on that you like as long as it's easy to unravel later. And then I will knit five rows. And that'll give me 20 times five, 100 stitches. Six, seven, eight, Okay, so this swatch that I'm going to do is for this Shoreline Chalette, and it actually gives the gauge in garter stitch, not stockinette. So I'm going to go ahead and knit garter stitch, but if you're doing a gauge swatch in stockinette, you'll want to do this in stockinette. swatch of garter and this is a hundred stitches so I'm now ready to unravel this but I want to unravel this in a way where I'm able to mark out the actual knit stitches I want to make sure that I don't include my cast on row because that will actually throw off the calculation so I've got these oops <laughs> so I've got these two magic clips here and I'm going to use these clips to mark out the section of yarn that I actually did the knitting with um, if you don't have magic clips, uh, you can use a paper clip, you could use binder clips, just something that lets you know, like, here's where I finished knitting right here. I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to start unraveling, but I want to make sure that when I get to my last row of unraveling, that I don't unravel my cast on row. Okay, so... This right here is my cast on row. So I'm gonna actually, here's the last, here's the last stitch of this row. 
on my first row of knitting. I'm actually going to take my clip, binder clip, my magic clip, and just put that right on there. Uh, if you had a locking stitch marker, you could put it there, but that way I will make sure that I don't unravel past that point before I'm ready. Okay, now I'm going to take that off and I'm just going to remove that stitch. And as I do, I'm going to pinch where that yarn came out and then I'm going to put my next clip right there on it. That's accurate enough. This doesn't have to be like super, super precise, but that's precise enough. So I have a magic clip right where I had my last stitch of that little mini swatch, and I have a magic clip on right here at the end of that, and I unravel my row. So all of this, all of this yarn right here represents 100 stitches. So now that we know that, we are going to measure out the length of this yarn so we can start figuring out how many inches per stitch we have. I'm going to pull out my ruler here. Uh, this ruler, I love having quilters rulers. Uh, I'm not the biggest sewist. I do sew some. And so I have a, like a bunch of of quilters rulers and I have found them very handy. This ruler is 18 inches so it's actually um, half a yard so it's it's handy. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start measuring out how much yarn I utilized to knit up this hundred stitches. So I'm going to put the beginning of the yarn right here at the end and then I'm going to bring the yarn to the other end and one thing when you do this measurement and this is really important you don't want to stretch the yarn out. You want it to keep it relaxed. If you stretch the yarn, you're actually going to be throwing off your calculation. So just keep it relaxed in its natural state. Don't stretch it out, you know. So that's 18 inches of yarn. I'm going to put my finger right here like this. I'm going to just pull this across. Again, I don't want to overstretch the yarn. That is 36 so that's a yard right there of yarn. So that's 36. So that's two pulls that I've done. I'm going to do my next pull across. And kind of straighten it, but don't stretch it out. It's a yard and a half. Okay. And then I think this is going to be it. Let's see. Pull that out a little bit. Oh, wow. Okay. So... I'm almost, I'm going to call this two yards of yarn for a hundred stitches. That's just luck. That's just straight up luck that that turned out to be two yards. And that's going to make this much, much simpler. I'm going to bring out my calculator and make sure. 36 times two is 108. So I made a really big mistake. <laughs> you might have heard my audio and I said 36 times two, but on the calculator I pressed three and I just didn't notice and so my math is all wrong. And it's why it's always important to double check your math when you're doing things like this. Uh, yeah, here's what the math should have been. So 36 times two is 72. So that's 72 inches of yarn that I used. Um, so what I need to do now is figure out how much yarn per inch I use for each stitch. So 72 inches divided by 100 stitches equals 0.72 inches per stitch. Now that I know that, I can figure out the rest of this. 966 stitches times 0.72 equals 695 and about a half inch. A little bit more, but we'll say half inch. Then I'm going to take that and figure out the number of yards. So 695.52 inches divided by 36 equals 19.32 yards. So I'm going to go ahead and round that up to 21 yards that I would need for my swatch. The reason for that is quite simple. I want to make sure that I'm having enough yarn uh, for cast on, for bind off, 
to have a nice like five to six inch tail at my bind off and my cast on. And also it gives me a little bit of wiggle room in case I made any mistakes along the way. Maybe I stretched the yarn out too much when I was doing the measurement. Uh, it just gives some room for error and I think it's always better to estimate needing more yarn than you might need than less yarn. If for some reason I wanted to make sure that I had enough yarn to do my gauge swatch or really be uh, precise because I had a limited quantity and I wanted to try to use the bare minimum of yarn possible to do my gauge swatch, I would go ahead and uh, pull out 30 yards of yarn and let that be my gauge yarn and feel pretty confident I would have enough yarn to at least do one gauge swatch. Now, something to keep in mind about this is my calculations are based on knitting 966 stitches for uh, the yarn and the needle that I'm using for my gauge swatch. But that doesn't mean that when I knit my gauge swatch that I'm going to end up with a six by six square. And the reason for that is I'm guessing, I'm guessing at this point, if my needle and my yarn will actually create the tension that I need for the pattern. If I end up with a gauge swatch that's bigger than six by six or smaller than six by six, that's gonna be a really good clue to me that I'm going to have to make a different needle choice. Uh, I won't be able to know necessarily how much to go up or down in needle size or whether I'm gonna to need to do um, choose a completely different yarn until I actually go through the whole swatching process. And I do have that video. But it, at least I know the amount of yarn that I'll need, the bare minimum of yarn that I'm going to need in order to knit my first gauge swatch. So there can be some benefit to you for having that information. Um, but a word of warning about this. More and more, you are seeing patterns that will give you two gauges in their pattern. One will be the stockinette gauge and one will be a stitch pattern gauge. A really well-written pattern will tell you which of those gauges to use for your swatch. Um, sometimes a designer will choose to give you the stockinette gauge in addition to a stitch pattern gauge um, so that you have the stockinette gauge as a reference for yarn substitution. Um, and their intention as you, is that you do your gauge swatch with the stitch pattern. And the reason for that is that um, Stockinette uses both knits and purls, and so the theory in the past was that if you knit to a certain tension with your knits and your purls, that will translate to various stitch patterns that might be used in the work. Well, that theory doesn't totally hold up. The fact is, if you're knitting lace, if you're knitting cables, knit purl combinations, these sorts of things can actually uh, affect the tension with which you knit and how that tension is really what gauge is about. But the basic math and principles behind it remain the same regardless. It's just you have to be aware that you can't knit necessarily a mini stockinette or a mini garter swatch and expect that yarn yardage to translate to a lace stitch pattern or a cable stitch pattern because the amount of yarn that's used up in an individual stitch pattern like that can vary wildly from stockinette and garter. So that is it, that is how I would calculate the amount of yarn that I needed for either doing a gauge swatch or um, for my yarn bundles in Intarsia. Uh, I would love to know if you have any hints or tips or tricks on how you can estimate yardage for those types of situations. Please let me know down in the comments below or please let me know if you have any questions about today's video. Uh, I love answering your questions and you never know one of your questions might inspire a video. Like today's video is totally inspired by a question that I got on the community tab. Um, by the way, speaking of the community tab, uh, I often post there with uh, updates on flash sales that I see, just things going on with the channel. If you want to be part of the broader conversations that go on here, please make sure that you subscribe and that you hit the notification bell. Subscribing and hitting the notification bell will mean that you see when I post to the community tab in your subscription feed. So that is a great way to kind of keep in touch with what's going on over here at Carrie Craft Geek. Um, 
I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your other knitting friends. Liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos are all great ways to help support my channel and let YouTube know that this is a great space for other knitters and crafters to check out. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy making. Bye. It's going to be like this round pop every time the video. There's like nothing I can do. If you want to know what's going on, they're bringing flooring in. I'm not kidding. My house flooded. We're having to replace a lot of flooring. And so today we got the flooring in and they're bringing it in and it has to sit in a room for like two or three days to acclimate to the climate inside the house. So it's like, so every once in a while there's just this pow sound and that pound is them dropping another box of flooring down on the floor and tiling. There's just a lot of going on. But like, believe it or not, this is like the quietest I have to film right now. And I have to like, just, can't if I don't if I wait I won't I won't have videos to put up it's like this is real life happening it's real life anyway <sighs> hopefully you're not hearing well you're gonna hear that if you click on affiliate link it'll take you to a place where you can do some shopping if you a gauge gives you <laughs> I should say so but but there are liking videos, sharing.